So now that we are near the end of chapter five and I've shown you various methods for selecting objects, let's put all that knowledge to use by using multiple selections to create a character for an advertisement. I call this assignment the melon head ad. So what I'm gonna do is go into file, browse in bridge. I've given you a lot of photos to contend with. You got to go through them and make sense of it all. So the best way to do that is in Adobe Bridge. So right here is my desktop. I will double click to look inside my folder. There's my Photoshop demos. Double click. Here is my chapter five. I'll double click. And right here is Melonhead Add. I'm going to double click to look inside there. Here is your advertisement. Okay, you can double click to open this up. You are gonna create an ad. Okay, you can either do it for Naked Juice, or you could do it for Tropicana, or you could do it for V8 Splash. Just pick one of those. Do an ad for V8, do an ad for Tropicana, or do an ad for Naked Juice. Come up with a tagline. You can take this capital T, double click, and then type in your own. Put your tag line here to be creative. Okay, come up with your own tagline. Right now I'm drawing a blank, but I gave you a type layer for that. So we got the new ad symbol right there. And let's say we wanna do one for Tropicana. You can take the others and throw them in the trash just so they don't pop up again. Now I go back to browse in bridge and we'll click on bridge here. And then I have the inspiration. How did I come up with this idea? So I'm gonna double click that folder. And these are a couple of ads that I saw online. So here's an ad for an energy bar, eat fruits and they give you energy. Um, here's a nice little Photoshop all summer long and the summer heat is just melting. Or here's another one, the Dallas Farmer's Market. Just being a little creative. I want to push your creativity way beyond that. So right up here, 5.6 Melonhead Ad. Now, how do you create a character? I've given you this folder, number three, fruits and veggies. You have all of these on white backgrounds. You're welcome. I did all the cutouts pretty much for you. So you decide which one of these, and I found some really exotic fruits and vegetables, you decide which one of these you want to turn into body parts. You know, a, a finger could be a little carrot. And the head of a character could be a cantaloupe. Or the head of a character could be a cranberry or a melon. It's totally up to you. So what I would suggest is to look at some samples first. So right up here in Adobe Bridge, I'm going to go back to chapter five. You do not have this folder as part of the class. I'm just gonna show you some previous student examples. Melonhead previous examples. Okay, these are all examples that other students have done. I don't think it's fair that I hand you out a bunch of copies of their work, but I will show you what they created. So we used to do one for just juice. I've updated it now. It's either Naked Juice or Tropicana or V8. And I used to give them the tagline. Now I want you to be creative. So have a character in mind. This character, Kirby, was a melon. Here's a couple, I think, um, I think that was a melon that they just turned red. And they put in a background. The tagline is kind of hard to read. Orange on blue doesn't work too well. But I like that they gave them an environment. Okay, here's another one. They chose coconuts and pears and bananas and kiwis and cantaloupe to create this little monkey. But he kind of sits on this yellow background. I don't, I'm not sure where he's at. I wish there was a picture of an island or something. Okay, here's another one. 
great job. There's a melon and a couple of bananas and a carrot that's been darkened and stretched. And there's a couple of avocados for the ears. But this character is just floating in the air. Here's BB-8 made of cantaloupes and lemon slices and carrots and blueberries. And they put him on the Millennium Falcon. Kind of cool. Here's a bell pepper and blueberries and baby tomatoes and strawberries and carrots to create SpongeBob. I wish he was uh, under the sea instead of just floating on yellow. Here's another great little cartoon character. There's a color tinted pineapple. There's two big chunks of a strawberry. They put her in a background and a scene in a location. There's... Uh, another Spongebob character in the ocean. I kind of like that. That's a cool little character. I wish there was a little bit more going on in the background. Not really sure where that character is. Or if he's running towards us. Or if he's jumping and flying through the air. Here's another little Kirby. He's always popular because he's so simple. Um, check out that. Kermit the Frog is Spider Frog. You got to be kidding me. I love that detail in the background that motion blur kermit is made up of a bunch of different chunks of pears and watermelon and blueberries that's pretty cool love this little character but i'm not sure where he's standing or what he's standing on i mean check out that eeyore that is awesome there's a melon there's some blueberries there's a I think that's a chili pepper, obviously color tinted watermelons and strawberries, but I wish he was standing out in the forest or sitting in the forest. Here's a character they just created on their own. Love all the hair that's going on there. The watermelon has been warped into this dress. She's wearing this beautiful bouquet right here. This is great. Um, there's another great little character, but I don't know where he is. Gravity Falls, that's one of my favorite shows. I love it. These like pictures of hair. I think that was a coconut fiber, but all the melons, the different bananas that have been color tinted. A melon's been color tinted pink. They put her out in the um, forest. That's great. Here's somebody who did just a simple uh, fish with a lemon, a carrot, bent carrots, licorice radishes i wish there was more fish swimming around there there's another fun little character here's an awesome mario made of fruits and vegetables but where the heck is he is he flying through the air is he jumping over a character i don't know where he's at this is killing me love that mario that's all made of fruits and vegetables just with the pieces I provided. That is amazing. His hat is literally pomegranate hat. Love it. Look at his mustache and his eyebrows. It's bananas. So cool. Very creative. This is another one. Really love the creativity. The way they're stretching and manipulating and distorting. But I don't know where he's standing. I wish I had that. There's a couple of uh, swans in a beautiful lake. Don't do something like this where it's overly simplified. I don't know what character that is. I don't know why he's standing in this rainbow. I don't know why there's a spotlight on the character. I wish there was a prison background if he's got an inmate number. There's Mario Brothers character in a Mario Brothers world. Love it. There's Yogi Bear. I wish he was in Jellystone National Park, not floating in the middle of the yellow. Love the stretch and distortion of these carrot slices. There's a watermelon mouth, a melon eye, a blueberry. Uh, great, but I don't know where the character is. This, I know where the character is. Plus, pretty funny. Um, just running around on the beach. Jerry from Tom and Jerry. But I don't know where he's at. There's another little Mario character. And there is a Donkey Kong out in the jungle. These are cool, very creative. So what I want is for you to outdo some of these. How can you outdo this? Okay, it's possible. 
They just keep getting better and better every semester. So there's some things to think about. So now when I go back to chapter five and I come into 5.6 melon head ad, you've got your ad and you've got all your fruits and vegetables to choose from. Way more than what I've ever given those other people in the past. You've got more to choose from here than you've ever had before. Really exotic fruits and vegetables. Then you got prunes and potatoes and bananas and pears and mangoes. None of those people ever had those. I made more for you. Okay, so what I would do is you jump back to Photoshop and then have a character in mind. So let's say I jump down here to Google and let's go to a new image, Google Images, and I'm gonna type in Yoshi from Mario Brothers. Okay, I wanna find tools, size large, and we'll do this Yoshi right here. I click it, control click, or right click with your PC mouse, and I say open the image in a new tab, that shows up right up here. I can click on it to zoom in or out. I can control click or right click again and copy the image. Now when I close up my web browser, I click right here to jump back into Photoshop and I'll just start on the bottom. Edit, paste. I want to recreate that character for my ad. Okay, if he's not big enough, Command T on a Mac or Control T on a PC. I just drag the corner up a little higher. Okay, we're getting a little cut off because of this graphic, but that's no big deal. I'll just move him. No, we'll keep him there. Um, we'll keep him there for now. Let's just see what happens here. So what I'm gonna do is go to the opacity and lower the opacity, make him kind of a ghosted image right there. Then I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, so let's say we wanna make this big round nose for Yoshi. I just go down to bridge and I find a piece of fruit or a vegetable that has that same rounded kind of look. I don't want a blueberry, although it is round. It'll look like a big scab on the side of his nose. So maybe I'll try something like this cranberry. Double click to open it in Photoshop. I can zoom in. And since it has a nice, clean, white background, I take my magic wand. Click on the background. Turn my selection inside out. So now instead of selecting the white wall... I select the cranberry. I go to my move tool, move it all the way up, wait a second, and drop it in. Command T on a Mac or Control T on a PC lets me transform it. I can go outside and rotate it. I can click and drag the corners, go inside and move it, click and drag another corner. So maybe I want that right there. That's about the size of his nose, so I love that. But it's definitely not green like this character. But I do like the shape and the texture and the highlights and stuff. I just want him to have a green nose. So with any of these photos, what I would recommend first is you double click the name and start naming your body parts. Okay, I want this to be green, so I go to image menu because I'm looking at an image of a cranberry. I make some adjustments to the hue. Red is a hue. So I'm going to drag the hue slider, and I don't want those. I want him to go to the right to make him green. I just make a green cranberry. Who cares? Okay, cranberry is done. I close it. Now let's look at his mouth right here. It's got a unique little shape right there, almost kind of a pointed arch to that. So I'll go back to bridge and I'll start looking for an object that kind of has that pointiness 
to it as well, like a strawberry. Kind of like that pointiness right there. You're looking for shape similarities. I'm going to double click to open that. Take my uh, magic wand again. I'll click on the white, but I don't want the white wall. I want the opposite of that. So select menu, inverse. Now I've got the strawberry. So what you have to remember is only the move tool will move the fruit. You can't stay on the magic wand because it's going to move only the selection. Okay, so every time you're done with the selections, shift over to your move tool. I'll move it up. Wait a second. Drop it in. I'll tuck that underneath the nose. Command T on a Mac or Control T on a PC. And when I go outside the box, I can rotate it. Drag the corners in to shrink it. Pull it back into view. Maybe rotate it a little bit more and shrink it a little bit more and rotate it just to get it there. See, I kind of rotated to get those little uh, leaves out right there. Love it. There we go. Here, There's his mouth. I can call that mouth or strawberry mouth or whatever you want to do, but that fits pretty darn good right there. Okay, so let's say we want to do this part of the head, this big part right here. Now we're going to get even more creative. So I go into bridge and I'm going to select something like this melon. It's pretty simple shape. I like that. Let's see, I also have something like a garlic clove. Let's try a garlic clove just for the heck of it. Okay, I'll zoom in. I take my magic wand, click on white. Ooh, that kind of carves into the garlic clove. So here's how I fix that. Okay, the magic wand selects areas of value. The white is pretty close to that bright part of the garlic clove. So it didn't work very well. Not a problem. Select menu, inverse, Q for a quick mask, D for default colors, X to switch to white. And I just take my white paintbrush and I say, don't cut off that part of the garlic clove. I want that. Q for quick mask. There's my garlic clove. Perfect. Take my move tool and drag it over. Wait a second, drag it in. I'll tuck that underneath. Command T or Control T on a PC and I'll rotate that out. Kind of blow it up to a similar shape. It kind of matches that little curvature right there. Kind of like that right in there. And that's about as close as I can get. So I'll hit enter or return. But notice I didn't quite get the curvature. So here's the cool part. I can go to filter and liquefy. Okay, this shows me the garlic clove, but separate from everything else. So I click on this button, show the backdrop, show the garlic clove. Here's my zoom tool. I'll zoom in a little bit. Oops. Let's zoom back out. Okay, I want that garlic clove to go up in this curve. So right up here you have something called a forward warp tool. If it's too big, you resize it just like all the other brushes or you could drag the size right down there to make it a little more manageable. And basically, Liquify treats your photos like they're clay. So now I can push this. Let's make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to push this edge in, push this up and up and up and up and up and we'll keep on sculpting out the cheek of this character so watch this turn off the backdrop and i've blown it up right there i've warped it see down here i can take this and notice if i turn off the backdrop it just stops right there at this angle but i want it to be the chin so i take my forward warp and I warp it down and down and down like sculpting with clay. I'll push it out right there and I'll push it over right in there. 
sculpt that out into a chin. So now when I turn off, I click OK. He's got his chin. Look at that. I warped it to fit that shape right there. Awesome. All right, cool. Let's just call that a jawline. Okay, I can look at other areas. That's the idea is you're looking at similarities. That would be probably another melon shape. That would be a blueberry for his eyes. So again, just to show you a couple other methods, I click on BR for bridge. I'll double click the blueberry. Magic wand to select the background, select an inverse, switch to your move tool and you can move that all the way up, drag it all the way in, command T or control T and notice that's always going to be pretty much a circle. So if you want to distort it into an oval, you hold your shift key. See, I can squeeze that down then pull the corner, then move it, then go outside and rotate it, then hold the shift key and squeeze it down a little more if I want to. But I have the ability to manipulate these shapes to become any character I want. Okay, if I wanna copy over here, Command or Control J on a PC makes a copy jump to another layer. Okay, if I wanna do these fingertips, I'll come back into bridge and let's look at, uh, let's see, the carrot looks pretty smooth for now. So let's go with the carrot slice. I click on the background with my magic wand, select an inverse, always switch to the move tool, move it up, drop it in, Command T on a Mac or Control T on a PC. And I'll shrink that down right about there. Let's do that middle finger right there. Okay, not quite the big bulb at the end of his finger that I wanted. So I'm gonna keep it right there. And then again, filter, liquify. I can zoom in real close. I can show the backdrop. And you can make that a little darker or a little lighter. Just depends on how much you want to see. And now with my forward warp, I'll make that a little smaller. And let's go a little bit bigger. And now I just bend this out, bulb it out right there. Okay. We'll make this a little smaller. And now, ooh, not that small. I'll just pull these edges down kind of right along the edge of the fingertip like that, right along the edge of that fingertip right there. That's gonna work perfectly right there. Okay, we'll shrink that in a little bit, pull that out a little bit more. Now I click okay and he's got that rounded ball to his finger, but that's not a green finger. Image menu, adjustments, Hue and saturation, I'll pull this to the right. Maybe I want that finger a little darker, so we'll go a little darker on that. Maybe desaturate that a little bit, there we go. So let's do this other finger. Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC makes me make a duplicate jump to another layer. See, three copy. We'll put it down there. Command T on a Mac or Control T on a PC to transform that finger. And I think that works fine right there. Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC for another copy. Command T on a Mac to transform or Control T on a PC to transform. We'll put that one right there. Kind of like that. And we'll do one more for the thumb. Command J on my Mac, Command T to transform. That would be Control T on your PCs. And now he needs just a big hand to connect that all to. So I've already got a green nose. I'm just gonna take my move tool, click on it, 
Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC. I'll just tuck this layer underneath those other ones. Command T on my Mac or Control T on my PC. And I can shrink that down right there to kind of fit to the shape of his hand. If I hold Shift, I can stretch it. Shift allows me to distort it a little bit. So we'll put it right in there. Okay. I like how that's working, but I don't like these little spots in between. So here is your layer mask. This is your eraser. Okay. I click this one time. It creates an eraser. Remember from doing the multiplicity, it's D for default colors. If your mask is white, Painting with white won't do anything. So X for black. You erase by painting. So I'll just paint out this part of the hand. That wasn't supposed to be part of his hand. That's his hand. Cool. I can turn that off. See what it does right there. I like that. All right. Now notice his fingers. They kind of join in this weird way right here. So what I'm going to do is select number three, shift click three copy, shift click the second copy, shift click the third. So I get all of those fingertips and I can go to the pop-up and merge those layers. So now instead of three separate layers, I just have one. Okay, I'm gonna create another layer mask to erase. D for default colors. X to switch to black. And if I take a soft brush by dragging up, I can just skim the edge right there and get these fingers to kind of blend into the rest of his hand like that. So they all kind of blend into one big green hand. See, here's what I did. I just softened up the edges by painting and erasing with a soft brush. So that is the general idea. You're gonna build your character. You can turn off your scan when you're done. You'll have your character started. But like I said, in multiple copies, I want a background. So instead of just on a white background or a yellow background, create a scene. This character's walking, put him on a ground so he doesn't just float in the air. Okay, I'm looking for a full body character, not just a floating head. Right down from the head down to the feet. Okay, for a background, I'm just going to go out and search on Google again. Let's go to my Google images one more time. I'm going to type in Mario Brothers background. Tools, size, large because I got a whole background to fill and this is pretty simple right here I kind of like that because there's no other characters in the scene let's see that's 1900 by 1000 that'll work control click or right click with uh, a PC mouse open the image in a new tab right up there I can click zoom in a little more Control click, copy the image. Now I close up my browser, click on Photoshop and just say edit paste. Now all I have to do is zoom out a little more. Command T on a Mac to transform. That would be control T on a PC. And I drag the corners. That's why I had to zoom out. I need room to drag these corners. So we can have that go right down to there. I'll hit enter or return. And let's turn off my scan. So I would have my little uh, character from all these pieces right here. My little character jumping around in this scene. I can take the background and do a little blur and Gaussian blur. So we have it kind of faded out a little bit. We know he's in Mario land. We don't need to look at all these other little characters. I'd have this little dancing uh, character here. But look at my Tropicana logo.
kind of hard to read. And this looks really bad too. So if you ever have a problem, and you will with this corner, you take your move tool, click, it will find the layer for you. I've already shown you that if you take your magic wand and click on a flat area of color, you can hit delete on a Mac or backspace on a PC. We'll just get rid of that. Okay, the Tropicana, I take my move tool, click, because that color is a little hard to read. So remember, you can do layer styles to the right of any layer. You can double click and add different effects. So I could come down here, click on the words, not on the checkbox, click on the words drop shadow. I can set the distance right here. Maybe I'll set the angle down and to the right like that. Maybe I don't want that so dark. Okay, I can set um, the size. I can make it really blurry or very sharp. I have control of this when I click on the word. Or if I don't like a drop shadow, I turn that off and I click on a stroke and I just put a simple outline. There's the color of the outline. It goes outside the edges of the logo. I can make a thicker stroke, a thinner stroke, whatever I want to kind of help add to the legibility. I can click right here and make the stroke white if I wanted to, or red if I wanted to, or darker red, whatever I want. It's your advertisement. Do whatever you want. I just want to see how creative you can get. Okay, so I've shown you a bunch of examples. At the end, you just delete your scan, and this would be your advertisement. Okay, what I would recommend is as you start adding body parts, save your progress. I notice I haven't even saved any of this yet, but that's going to be the goal. Continuously save your progress as you go. Okay, if you are not done, go to File, Save a Copy, and you save the copy as a layered Photoshop file. Last name, first name, melon head add always on my desktop that way i can pick up later so again close the original i don't need to save the original let's say i get home and i'm ready to continue working because you might not finish this in one day i go to file and open on my uh, disk or on my desktop there's my file i just pick up where i left off when you are totally done, file menu, save a copy, and you save a JPEG when the whole thing is done. Okay, so save eight or high quality and go back and look at a bunch of those examples. Now you even have more photos to contend with and let's get crazy, let's get creative and let's have fun with Photoshop. I look forward to seeing what you can come up with here in uh, your short Photoshop future. All right, main thing is have fun. See you next time.